All right, Shalom. I want to start off with giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles, and elders of great millstone, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. So at work today, I was speaking to a younger brother, you know, not a brother that knows the truth, but this is a younger brother that inquires about different things. He asks for advice and things like that. And, um, he was just speaking and he said, uh, he said he thought about going to the military, right? Now, mind you, this brother, he knows, like his, uh, his father is a pastor and, um, he knows about Maxine. He said he's not taking it. He knows a little something about the mark of the beast. And he said he's not taking it, you know, he, he, I mean, he, he knows a, li a very little bit, but he knows enough where it says the Bible says not to take it. And he said he's a believer in the Bible. But, um, you know, and I explain things to him here and there, you know, just to, you know, give him perspectives. But, um, you know, he, he is speaking about going to the military. And I said, you know, that you want to take Maxine if you do decide to go to the military. Right. And he was like, hmm, I didn't think about that. And I was like, and I said, further on, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast. I know you don't want to take the mark of the beast. So now I got his mind going. And I told him, I said, read the judgment of taking the mark of the beast, which is in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, starting at verse nine. And read on down. Because there's a heavy judgment if you do take the mark of the beast. You know? So like I said, now I got his mind going. And I told him, I said, and if you do go to the military... I said, you do know that they're planning, they're going to uh, plan, not planning, but do you know they're going to fight the Lord? And he was like, wait a minute, what you say? I said, yeah. I said, World War III is going to take place, right? It's inevitable. And he was like, yeah, I know that. And I said, also, but they're going to fight the Lord, as the scriptures say. And you should just, the look on his face was just like unbelievable. It was like wait a minute what you know so i'll put that perspective in his head and you know long story short he was uh he was saying and i was I, mean, I was you know i spoke on a little bit i uh, speaking of the war of heaven you know the war of heaven where it's going to be yahweh shy and the angels you know um against e and his military okay his 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 weapon weaponry you know the air force you know, and so forth. But, um, you know, the look on his face and how I changed his whole perspe perspective and his thought about the military, it was, it was kind of am am amazing because he didn't look at it in that perspective. He didn't even think that far. And see, this is the problem with a lot of our people of they want to do a lot of things and they just, you know, they think they could just do things and, and live like regu regularly without, you know, with, without thinking things through. So now as I can see the look on his face, he's second guessing about going into the military, you know. Now, he's a he's a Bible believer, but he, he, he doesn't fully understand the truth of the Holy Scriptures. And I could tell from the previous conversations that we have, you know, you can tell from that his dad, his, pa his dad, which is a pastor, does not teach the correct doctrine. You know, so I'll be hitting him off with things here and there just to, you know, put things on his mind so that he may go look and research and come into the truth, hopefully, you know, but... Just further in speaking, um, let's lock in and get something out. I was just giving them the perspective if, do you know what's at stake if you do decide to go to the military? You know, and this is for anyone out there that decides or they have in their mind that they want to join the military. That is definitely not the route to go. Okay.
that is definitely not the route to go. You know? So, I want to get the scripture that's backing up what I'm speaking on of the war of heaven. All right? Let's go to the book of Second Edges, chapter 13. Now, if you're wondering why I have this fearful emoji on my screen, it's because he said, uh, talking about this scares me. And I knew it did. I seen the look on his face once I start explaining things. But he said, man, talking about this, this talking about things like this scares me. You know, but I know it has to be talked about. And I said, yeah, a lot of people don't want to face reality. And this is the reality of it. He's like, he's like, yeah, a lot of people would have been like, I don't want to hear this. OK, and see, that's the problem. Just because you don't want to hear something does not mean it won't take place. Does not mean you're going to, just because you're stopping your ears from hearing it. OK. Meaning it's going to pause of whatever is supposed to happen. Right. Just like if you seeing someone, you know, uh, getting robbed, OK, they're, uh, getting uh, snatched out their vehicle and getting their car stolen from you and you cover your eyes. That doesn't mean everything stops. No, you're just looking away from the danger and the things that's happening right in front of you. It doesn't stop anything. You know, so just not looking and wanting to face Wanting to face the reality of what's about to take place, right, does not mean it's going to stop it from coming. So, I mentioned this. So let's go to the book of Second Edges, chapter 13. And let's go to, let's see if I can find it. It's locked here. Second, Let's see. Yep, here we go. So it's the book of Second Edges, chapter thirteen, verse. Verse three it says, "And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong." The thousands of heaven with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So this is speaking of when it's talking about the man waxed strong with thousands of heaven. This is talking about Yahweh Shai and the holy angels. Right. Verse four. And when to ever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice like as the earth faileth when he faileth the fire. And after this beheld, I beheld and lo, there were gathered together a multitude of men. Out of out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. It's talking about Yahweh Shai coming out the heavens, all right? It says, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it, which is speaking of a chariot. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And that's talking about, you know, Edris is seeing his vision. But he's explaining how big this chariot is, as big as a mountain. And you know how big a mountain is. A mountain is 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 great, right? Enormous. But he said it wasn't a mountain because he would have seen the, the you know the the uh, he would have seen the region. He would have seen basically of where that uh, mountain would have came from if it was so. Right. He would have seen the area. Where, you know, the mountain was missing the, um, not the, uh, I forget what they, they would call it. You know, the mark, I'll just say that, the mark, okay? The showing where it was missing from. But verse 8 says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to, to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he needed to lift up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it as it I 
as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips of a flaming breath and out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempest and they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one so that so that upon a upon a sudden of innumerable multitude, nothing was to be able was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid, <laughs> you know, so as is seeing his vision of the war of heaven, war in heaven of Yahweh Shai, the holy angels fighting against E, man, E and his angels, which, you know, the scriptures refer to it as, as such, but E and his military, you know, and you got laser beams and things like this coming out of the chariots, burning and breaking, their, uh, burning and burning things up. Okay, like when you see this thing like Star Wars, just imagine it's something like that. Okay, when you see uh, the different the ships going at each other, shooting burst bursts of, of fire at each other, you know, late they use lasers, but you know, you get you get the drift. But <clears throat> this is going to take place. This is dealing with the war in heaven with Yahweh Shai. Uh, fighting against E and his military, man. E and his military, his force. Okay? So that's what I was, you know, mentioning. I said, well, look, these different things are going to come into play if you do decide to go join a force, E's force. You know? Yeah, you're going to have to take Maxine. That's a fact. You're going to end up having to take a, the mark of the beast. It's going to be it's going to be mandatory for you to take, it, especially being in, inside his military. There ain't going to be no way around it. But then on the other hand, I said, you're going to be, you're going to get into World War Three, and you're going to get tore. You're going to get tore up. You're going to get burnt. Because I said, everyone that's going to the Middle East to go fight that battle, they're out of there. If you're not of the elect that's going over there, you're out of there. And then pre, I say this, you know, and this is speaking as a man. I, I don't even think the elect would be in the midst over there. And I'm just speaking as a man now. But I know definitely if you got to take the mark of the beast, the elect is definitely not taking the mark of the beast. You see? Like I said before, you got to think about these different things of just trying to join, you know, uh, E, join in, in E stuff because you have no clue what's about to come. Okay, so I put that perspective in his mind and just with that perspective, I shook, I, I could tell I shook his world up. You know, because he haven't thought it to thought thought things like this. You know, no one have, has ever, you know, put these type of things in his mind to say, you better think about what you're doing. You know, so, you know, I know it's not too much and I'm, you know, rambling on a little bit, but I just wanted to share that to the spirit, you know, because as, he, as, as you know, as his whole facial expression changed when I start telling him telling him these things you know and his start his responses that he was starting to give I can tell that I put a whole new perspective and gave him a second thought of shit maybe not uh you know I, I don't maybe join the military I, what the hell was I thinking about you know and actually put a little fear into him but hey fear is good you know there's I mean that, that what I was doing was healthy fear you know but if he joined you know, that's on him. That's neither here or there. But I was just telling him, hey, these are the things you better look out for if you do. Okay? And if you talk about you're a Bible believer, well, you're going to be going against the grain if you do decide to join E's military. Because guess what? E and his military is going to be fighting against the Lord. Okay? So, I just wanted to touch on that to the Spirit. Lord, will I hope it was edifying. Until next time, I want to say shalom.